So when Philip Prince approached me from, he's from uh, Grove City College in Pennsylvania, which I see is quite a well, it's a small college, but it's highly rated in America. And and he just happens to have an amazing laboratory and, and he can do clinical trials on runners and cyclists with great results. He's just, they're just very good at doing that work. And all he needed was a direction. So what research should we do? So he asked me, I said, well, why don't we test the, the high, fat, high carb diet, high fat diet by putting people on a high carb diet for six weeks or so, and then having them do a performance trial and then reversing that and putting them on a high fat diet for six weeks. And of course, we didn't do all of them at the same time. We broke them in half, et cetera, because we, that's the only way you can do it. So we do these randomized controlled trials and we started at five kilometers. So I said, well, can you do reproducible 5K time trials on the treadmill in your laboratory? He said, yes, we get very good results. So I said, okay, well, let's do 5K time trials on these guys. And so we did. And we also did VO2 max tests before and before on the different diets. And guess what? <laughs> VO2 max was exactly the same. And the 5K time trial was exactly the same, the performance. So the performance didn't change. So then... I said, yeah, but what they're going to say is that it's because the guys still had some glycogen, even though you're on a high fat diet, you still got enough glycogen to run 5Ks. I said, let's let's put the intensity of the exercise up and then do an activity which will produce muscle glycogen depletion. So we said, right, let's make it a one mile time trial. So we put the speed up to the one mile and then they did the same experiments. And there was no difference. Again, the performance was identical. So those people eating a high fat diet can run one mile just as fast whether they're eating carbs or fat. And then I said, okay, fine, let's do six times 800 meter, eight, six times 800 meter intervals, because everyone knows that that's going to deplete your glycogen. So even if they start with some glycogen, by the third or fourth, they're, they're going to have no glycogen left and they're just going to fall over and not be able to exercise. So of course that didn't happen. They, performance was identical for the six times 800 meter repetitions. And then by chance, because I didn't tell Philip to do this or suggested it, he measured oxygen consumption while they were doing the intervals. And they, we measured the fat oxidation rates. Now, the textbook says the following, and this is the Bible that I taught for 40 years, that there's a so-called crossover point, that as you increase your exercise intensity, you reach a point where you can only burn carbs. You can't burn fat. And that's usually at 85% VO2 max. And that idea was developed by a great friend of mine, George Brooks, who taught me so much. He helped us. We did, when we did the studies of carbohydrate metabolism, we used traces, and he was the expert on tracer methodology in the world. And he came to Cape Town, and he showed us how to do it, and we've been friends ever since. So it's... It's not as if I wanted to go out and disprove him at all. That was never the goal. We just happened to find this. So what we discovered was that when they ran the eight times, sorry, six times 800 meter intervals, they were running at 86% VO2 max. By chance, God came along and said, it's 86% VO2 max. So they were, they were 1% over. And so they should have been burning zero fat. They burnt the highest rates of fat oxidation ever recorded in humans in history. Nice. 1.5 grams per minute, which is, it is enormous. I mean, that provides three quarters of the energy to run a sub two hour marathon just by burning fat. So why do you need carbs? So anyway, that was what we found. 